Hi, welcome to the 13th floor. I'm Marty Duda, and today we have with us Minnie Simmons. Now, you guys have been up here before, but we this have. is the first time you're actually recording for us. It's very exciting. Yeah. So to, and this is Brad, That's Craig, right. yep. he's the guitar player. Mm -hmm. uh, for, before we get started with anything else, run through the rest of the band. Who's everybody? So we've got Zach Hawkins on lead vocals and right. sometimes guitar. Yep. Uh, his brother, Jesse Hawkins, playing the bass. All right. Emily Mackey on keys. Right. And Yanni Yahal on drums. Yanni Yahal. Okay, great. So how, how, how long have you guys been doing your thing? Uh, since 2017. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we put our first EP out end of that year. Right. So yeah, it's been so a wee while now. It's been a wee while. Yeah. And how has the band evolved or changed since you started out? I think initially that, that version of the band was a lot more um, rooted in classic rock. Right. Like those early tracks would sound in kind of Zeppelin y, sort of a lot more like kind of blues rock sort of stuff. Whereas I think this last batch of songs, we were listening to a lot more of that sort of early 70s glam stuff, Bowie, T Rex, even like like the sort of Bowie produced uh, Lou Reed stuff as well was, right. was super influential on the, the latest stuff. So well, my favorite band is Mata Hoople. Oh, well, there you go. Yeah. yeah. Sweet. <laughs> yeah. So you can't go wrong there. Mm. So, and, uh, so, and you guys, the, the three songs that we're going to hear are all originals from the band? All originals written kind of over that lockdown period, really. Right. Bar the second, oh, the single that we just released, that was written maybe a year ago. Right. I found the phone demo the other day, and I was oh. like, ah, that's <laughs> how this used to sound. Cool, you know? That's excellent. And that's how was nice. your lockdown? Did you guys get to hang out much together? It was, it was pretty cool. So I was actually living with Yoni. Yep. He lives, um, he's got a house in Kingsland just down the road. So it was me, him, and his sister living there, and we played heaps and, you know, just jamming all the time, which yeah. was pretty sweet. Yeah. And um, you know, we could send stuff back and forth between the other members and say, oh, try put some lyrics on this or, you know. Right. Yeah, it was kind of, it was nice though. I mean, I feel like there's a lot of people have been like, yeah, lockdown was kind of okay, you know. Well, it was, it's not bad in New Zealand. It's other not places, bad. maybe not so well, good, yeah. but this is the place to yeah, be. Yeah, right, yeah. yeah. Okay, so let's get to, so, to our first song. It's mm. called The Bellboy and the Longshoreman. Yeah. What's this? It sounds like a story behind that. There's a there? story behind that one. That was actually, that was uh, written by Zach. Right. Um, and it's kind of a, it's a play on maybe a play or a film. He told me the other day about it, but um, he's kind of done one of those things where you're sort of inspired by a story that's written right. and gone, well, I'll write a what if kind yeah, of yeah, yeah. twist it my way and, yeah. and that sort of thing. So um, he's a great lyricist, Zach. Um, it's not the kind of song that I could ever write. Right. So it's but you nice. do take a guitar solo in the middle. I do. Yeah, 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 yeah. So that one was was definitely um, down that sort of uh, Bowie kind of that glam rock sort of vibe. So that's Very what we're shooting for on that one. Yeah. All right. Well, let's give it a listen. Yeah. Man. 
All right, we're back here with Brad from Mini Simmons. We just heard The Bellboy and The Longshoreman. We've got two more tunes to listen to. Now, I've seen you guys, you've been playing out quite a bit recently. Yeah. You did a, a Cross Street Festival, was that right? And yeah. then I think at Galatas. So, so what's it, was it a long time between gigs or did you guys manage to sneak out every once in a while? It was a while. Yeah. It was a kind of a conscious effort between the whole COVID thing and writing a whole lot of new tunes. Right. We were sort of like, well, let's not, just go out and play for no reason, you know, let's, let's work on the songs a bit and right. then come out once we've got something we really want to play. Um, Cross Street obviously was rescheduled, so they're yes. sort of all kind of fallen in a big clump at the moment, but right. it's been nice, you know, yeah. playing lots again. And you mentioned that, you know, when you first started, you were very much classic rock, Led Zeppelin. Do mm. you see the band in a different light now than you did like three or four years ago? Totally. I mean, we, we bought um, Emily Mackey on keys. Right. And that where'd you find her? We found her uh, in Hawke's Bay. Right. Uh, we played a festival down there called Nest Fest um, a few years ago now, and she was playing with her old band um, called Debbie Fair. Okay. Um, and then we were like, oh, we should we should steal her for a tour. You know, so <laughs> like we kind of just brought her on as a as a sort of um, touring musician initially, right. and then it kind of worked out that oh, this would be great to just have all the time. You right. Know? Um, so that's a bit of a big change and then Zach started playing more guitar as well which kind of frees me up to do less rhythm stuff and right yeah just more textures involved in that yeah. way it's kind of cool now the next song is a single push yeah, and pull it is yeah and is this one you wrote I did I wrote yep. this one yeah probably about a year ago um, and it was definitely inspired at the time more by um, can you hear me knocking by the stones oh yeah that groove, that sort of like mm -hmm. slow mm -hmm. sort of, yeah, well, that goes into that, but that, <laughs> yeah, yeah. that kind of groove um, with the shakers and everything. We put sort of bongos on it as well, just sort of like really groove it up. Um, but when we ended up mixing and recording it, it 
was sort of going more in the realm of like T-Rex. And, oh. and I think we referenced, the last track we really ended up referencing on that was Soul Love of um, Ziggy Stardust. Ziggy yeah. um, and I actually sampled a clap off that. <laughs> Did you really? Yeah, because there's a great <laughs> intro of that song, which is just drums and claps and it's like this yep. really crisp clap so I was like I'm just gonna chop the clap out <laughs> I don't think That's anyone would know. mind you know well, like it's the tiniest thing but yeah. if we get sued by Tony Visconti or someone then so man <laughs> <laughs> worst things could happen I'm yeah sure. yeah yeah very cool alrighty yeah. well let's give it a listen then this is push and pull without the sample without the sample yeah right. <laughs> We're here at the 13th floor with Minnie Simmons. We have Brad with us, who's the guitar player. He's going to tell us about the next song we're going to hear. But uh, let's see. So you haven't released an album. No. It, not in the classic rock mode. You're, you're trying something different. Kind yeah. Of one song at a time. Or? Pretty much, yeah. The last uh, full-length, well, our only full-length album came out in 2019. Right. Um, and then since then, we're sort of like, oh, let's kind of step back and think of, you know, a better, well, not a better way of doing this, but... Uh, a more efficient way of doing it for you know 2021 right and it's uh singles is kind of the game right now so we're happy to just just like work on a single put it out work on a single put it out see if we can get more music out that way and i'm curious because i have no idea how the music business works these days as mm. far as 
do you get airplay from radio stations? Is that the thing? Or are you just looking for Spotify plays? Or what, 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 what do you consider a successful release? I think it's both, right? Like it's Spotify is, is, a, is so huge these right. days. That's kind of what everyone's, if you're looking at numbers purely, like yep. you go on someone's profile and you have a million plays, something like that, that'd, that'd be really nice. Yep. We're yep. not quite there yet. Yeah. <laughs> um, but I mean, yeah, you kind of have to be going down every avenue, right? So we still send it out to radio and, and go and do press on, on stations when we can, just right. to sort of get it around there and, and get it heard. So yeah. got to have fingers in many pies, I think. Yeah. And yeah. you're doing well on live shows. I think the last two I saw, you had big crowds. Yeah. We're pretty surprised actually, because we had, hadn't played in a while. Right. Um, and yeah, people were like really digging it and you know, t-shirts in the front row and stuff. I was like, that's pretty cool. Mm, you know? Nice one, nice one. <laughs> yeah. And, and do you have another single lined up ready to go or? Yeah, the, so the two, the other two that we played, um, yep. Bellboy and, and Railroad, we just finished doing some tracking for that at the lab with okay. Joel Mulholland. Right, just down the street here. Yeah, yep. exactly. Um, so we'll probably, we'll be sort of doing some over, um, overdubs and stuff on that. Um, but yeah, hopefully in the next few months we should have something ready to go. Cool, cool. Yeah. So the last song we're going to hear is called Railroad for Two. Mm. It's and a ballad. It's a ballad. Yeah. And uh, Emily's on the piano on this one. That's yeah, really it's nice. nice to be able to use your piano there. Well, we love it. It's well. great. <laughs> and uh, did you say uh, your drummer? Yeah. Yanni wrote it? Yanni wrote the, the bare bones of that. So that's been another cool thing about um, the progression of this band, he's, right. he started playing more guitar, not so much in the band, because it's kind of hard to do the big swap like that. Yep. But um, he plays just and writes a lot. You know, he's at that great period of when you learn an instrument, he know, now knows enough to like actually write songs. Right. And it sounds kind of cool. And so, yeah, he, um, he kind of wrote the bare bones of it and then sent it to Zach um, and he put lyrics on it. And yeah, so I think it was done while we were uh, in lockdown together. So. I was kind of there jamming with them going like, oh yeah, that's good. Like mm -hmm. maybe this chord here instead of that one. And yep. yeah, a bit of a team effort. Cool, yeah. cool. And you got more gigs lined up? Yeah, so we're a third of the way through our tour right now. Right. Uh, we played Auckland on Friday night and we just drove back from Ohope. Yep. Where we played um, for a surf uh, competition down there on <laughs> Saturday night, which was pretty cool. Like 500 um, people in the, in the venue down there. And then we've got, uh, Littleton yeah. with Adam Hadaway. Oh, great. Yeah. Which he was fun. just up here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We, we saw him. It was pretty cool. And then we've got uh, Hastings and, um, yeah, and then Raglan and what's the last one is Wellington. Man. Well, okay. There you go. <laughs> we right. got there. That's enough. Yeah. All right. Well, great. I'm glad you managed to stop in here on your in the middle of your tour. Yeah. We've, we've enjoyed you immensely. Hey, thank you. Thank you and come again. And in the meantime, we're going to listen to Railroad for Two. Thanks, buddy. Dash on. 
Faceless with red, the station is cold. 